Are you looking for an easy effect to apply to all of your scenes that can improve every render? Well, you should probably lower your expectations. But this effect can be used to improve a lot of your renders. This video is sponsored by Rococo. We're gonna be creating this fast to render, easy to implement and modify particle system that will kind of create floating debris in our air. This is great for adding depth to a multitude of scenes and can add a lot of realism as well. So let's dive in and look at how we can create this effect. So first things first, grab the default cube and we're gonna go ahead and delete that, except actually this time we're going to use you little buddy so grab your default cube and what we're actually going to do is tab it into edit mode there and scale that up I'm gonna press s and then 4 and that'll make the box a little bit bigger there to give us more room to work with next we're going to grab our cube here let's name this dust box we're gonna grab our collection here and name this dust Awesome, just to keep things a bit organized, it'll make more sense later. Now with our cube selected, what we can do is come down here to the particle system. We're going to click a new system here. So let's call this the dust system. And then down here, we will call these particles dust. Great, so now if I switch over to wireframe view here and I hit play, we can see that we're getting particles on our cube, but you can see that they're coming from the kind of outside of the cube and we want them to come from the volume of the cube. So what we're going to do is we are going to come over here to our particle system. We're going to twirl down source under emission there. And then instead of emit from faces, we're going to emit from volume. Now, if we go back here to wireframe view and hit play, we should see that they're coming from all inside the volume of the cube, which is great because what we want to do is be able to easily place this cube into our scene and have it encompass our scene and kind of fill the scene with dust or debris or whatever it is that you want floating around your scene. Next, let's look at some of the physics that we have going on here. So we're going to want to twirl down our physics tab and we'll come back to that in a moment. We're gonna to wanna to twirl down our velocity tab. We're gonna come down here first to the field weights here and you'll see that we have the gravity here. Now what this slider does is affect how much the gravity in the scene, which is set in the physics properties here, is going to affect the particles in your scene. In this case, we don't really want gravity to affect our dust at all. So we're gonna go ahead, turn this off and you're going to see immediately that we start kind of spitting out dust into the cube. Great. Next, what we want to do is go ahead and change the fixes here a bit. So we're going to leave this onto Newtonian, but we're going to change a few things here. So this Brownian here, if we change that, you'll see will kind of create a more kind of warbly effect as it adds kind of noise into the movement there. But you can see that if we get in close, it's creating these kind of micro jitters, which isn't what we really want for kind of slow floating particles. So let's look at how we can go ahead and combat that. So first of all, I'm gonna change my Brownian up to something like 25 there. And then we can actually go ahead and add a bit of damping. So what damping is going to do is dampen the movement. So if I crank that all the way up, you can see how it's holding everything there, but it's still kind of doing that jittering effect from the Brownian. Now, first of all, let's go ahead and lower the dampening. We don't want it to be quite that much. So let's go ahead and do something around like 0 0.05. And there you can see that it's kind of starting this little movement, though maybe not enough. The other thing is that you'll notice that some of these are kind of generating with velocity. So we're actually gonna come up here to that velocity up here. And right now when it generates, it's going at one meter a second. We're gonna go ahead, turn that down to zero. We don't need velocity on these. We're trying to create more of a free from floating effect. So if we come over here to the physics tab again, we can twirl down this integration. And here you can see we have the time step and it's already a tiny number, but you can see that if we crank this up, what it's kind of doing is affecting the speed of the simulation. So we can actually lower that number even more. So we're gonna set this to something really low, like 0 0.005. And you can see immediately how we're starting to get just a very slow moving particle effect. Perfect. However, you'll see that our particles are still kind of popping in and out and that has to do with the lifespan. So let's fix that next. We're gonna come up here. We're gonna set our lifetime to something very high. You can set this to whatever number you want because in general, you don't want these particles to disappear. I generally set mine to something around like 5,000 frames because I generally never have a render that is going to be over 5,000 frames in one project. And then what we wanna do is change when the frame starts and when it finishes. Because if you notice right now, we have to wait for everything to kind of populate the scene and that's not what we want. We can actually set our frame start to a negative value. So I'm gonna go ahead here and do negative 100. And then I'm going to set my end to whatever the scene is. So in this case, to Then for the end here, I'm actually going to do zero because I want these all to generate before the scene starts. So now if I hit play, you can see that I have all those particles there and they're kind of staying and floating and not moving. Now, if you want, you can increase the size of the Brownian, decrease the damping, 
or increase the time step to then have further control over how your particles are moving. But for right now, I'm really happy with this kind of subtle effect. Great. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make this a little bit lower so it's a little less crowded as we're kind of moving into the next phase. Now we're going to create a dust particle and then we're also going to create a material that will kind of render quickly and also make it fit into our scenes a bit easier. So let's look at how we can do that next. So first we need to create a particle. Now you can use any form of debris you want to use. I'm going to go ahead and just use a basic icosphere so that it just looks like small dust circles. So I'm gonna go ahead and add an icosphere here. We're gonna turn this down to one subdivision and this is just going to give us a very low poly dust particle. So if I switch over to rendered view here, I want to point out one of the problems that you're probably going to have with this is that we can not see our particles. So what we can do is we can come over here to the particle emitter. And if we come down here to render, we can click off show emitter. But you'll notice that in the viewport, it still shows the emitter. However, it won't show up in the final render. So there's actually another setting. You come down here in the viewport display and you can toggle off show emitter here. And then now we can kind of see our particles in render view as we work on materials and other things. So great. The other problem we have is that our particle is smack dab there in the middle of the scene. So let's go ahead and name this dust particle. And we're going to come back to our box here and we're going to change from the render view, we're going to change from render as halo to render as an object, and then we're going to choose our dust particle, which is great. So now we can see all of our particles here, but we want, want this big particle in the beginning. Now you can move this way out of the scene, but that can be annoying to do. And you'll notice that if you turn it off here in the viewport, it disables all your particles. So there's kind of a weird workaround here that works in Blender. We'll go ahead, create another collection, call this dust particle. We're going to drag that into there, and then we're going to uncheck that box. Now it won't render that particle or show that particle, but you can see that it still appears here in our scene. So that's kind of like a little hack you can do to get rid of that particle. So let's go back here and look at our dust. Next, we're going to want to affect the size of the dust. So it's a bit big by default, and you could go ahead and change the original dust particle, but we can actually control all that here under our render settings. So under our render settings here, we're gonna go ahead and change the particle size. So you're gonna wanna set this to something really tiny. Of course, do what works for you, but I'm gonna go ahead and set mine to something around point 0, 01, and you can see that that's going to make all those particles super small. So with this, we're pretty much done with our particle system, but we need to focus on materials and making sure these are visible in the scene. So what I'm gonna do is come up here, turn off scene world so that I can get some general lighting in here. And you can see that we're getting all of our particles kind of lit. I'm gonna go ahead and add a camera here and turn on some depth of field so we can kind of see what we're working with. So within my camera view here and the render, you can see that we're kind of getting that effect that we want. Some of the particles are in focus and some are out. I'm gonna go ahead and set this a little bit lower. But the problem is you can see that some of these are a bit sharp. So we're actually gonna go ahead and change a few more settings to help that, which we could do primarily in the materials. But one other thing you may wanna do is that you don't want these to be casting shadows or really affecting the lighting of your scene. So with that dust box chosen, what you can do is you can come up here to the object properties, come down here to the visibility, and then you'll see we have the ray visibility. And we want this to only be visible to the camera. So if we go ahead, check these off, that'll help us render a bit quicker, and it'll also prevent it from casting kind of ugly shadows into our scene. Now let's look at how we can make these particles look a bit better. So coming here into the shader menu, we're gonna to go to the shader editor, and we are going to grab our dust particle. So let's go ahead, turn that back on grab that particle there, I'm going to click new, and then we're going to call this dust. Great, now what we're going to do is kind of build out a simple system here. So one problem we're going to have when we put these particles in our scene is they're very quickly going to kind of fade out of visibility. So we're going to fix that. So what we're going to do is actually use an emission shader. And what this will do is kind of brighten it up so that they're immediately visible and more readable by the camera. But this poses some problems. One, being the emission shader, they're likely going to cast light into our scene, which we do not want. And we also don't want them to be too bright. So let's go ahead, pick a kind of off color here. I'm gonna pick something there to give it more of kind of a dusty color and show you a quick trick. We're going to go ahead, add a diffuse here. We'll copy this color here. And then we're going to add a mix shader. We'll drag that there and we will put this one into the bottom slot and the diffuse into the top slot. Now we don't want these casting lights into our scene. So what we'll use here as a factor is a light path node. This node doesn't get used enough. It's a great node. If we type here is camera road, what it's going to do 
is based on the viewport of the camera and the light pass going to the camera. It will show the emission, but in terms of casting light, it will use the diffuse. That way we don't have light sources moving all around our scene. Now, the other thing I had with these dust particles was that when I put them in my scene, they were far too bright and were kind of overpowering the scene and drawing the eyes to them. And I wanted a bit more control over that. So that's pretty simple. Go ahead, we'll add another mix shader here. We'll just go ahead and duplicate this one, drag that there. And then what I did is I added a transparent PSDF and this won't really affect your render times much. So it's a great one to use. And then what you can do is use this factor here to change the visibility of your particles. I found that setting mine to around 0.75, kind of helped them blend into my scene. And if you look at here, you can see how I'm using some of these final results in my short film to add some depth to my cam shots. By putting these particles here, you can kind of have some th things floating out of focus, and that helps convey the depth of the scene and also add a bit of life to your scene, because oftentimes as independent artists, we have a hard time kind of fully fleshing out scenes. As usual, these project files will be available on my Patreon. That's a great way to support the channel if you're interested, so check those out at the link below. Rococo provided me a full set of their suit with facial motion capture, hand capture, and body capture. Now Rococo uses a magnetic based system to detect its motion and it works over Wi-Fi, which is awesome because what this means is that anywhere with a laptop, computer, or Wi-Fi connection, you can record high quality motion capture data without the need of a multi-million dollar studio. If you're familiar with Ian Hubert's and his Blender channel, he uses it in his videos to help motion capture and apply that data to some of his humanoid characters. I've actually been using this on some of my VR work for prototyping and recording my hands to be in the foreground. Rococo offers incredibly high quality studio level motion capture data at a much more affordable price than the competition. Now, if you're not interested in buying an entire motion capture setup, you can actually check out their library, which has affordable options to download a ton of animations that you can use in your games, animations, visual effects, and more. Of course, I'll link to everything below so you can check it out and let me know what you think in the comments below.